This is Bob. He doesn't know it yet, but he's been exposed to the coronavirus. Because Bob feels just a little under the weather, he decides he can go out with his friends. Now they're infected, and they infect others. And those people infect other people, and so on. If every person infects just three others, after four iterations, we're already at 81 people infected. Not to worry. We can do something different to keep this from happening. What if after Bob infected his friends, just three people in this chain change their behavior, like not going out, working from home, or maybe they stop traveling because they don't feel well? In this case, we can cut the number of infected to about one-third. This is how we flatten the curve. But what does that really mean? Let's pretend that this is our maximum healthcare capacity. In normal situations, we do not exceed this line and everybody gets the care they need. However, when we have a pandemic, the number of people who need help rises past this maximum. That means all the people above this line can't get the adequate care that they need if they can get care at all. But thankfully, we can do something about it. When we take the appropriate steps to distance ourselves and wash our hands, we can slow the spread of the disease. And the curve goes from looking like this to something like this, meaning that everybody can get the care they need. However, there are other ways we can help. For instance, we can create a model to predict the number of people needing care in the near future. There are a lot of ways to do this, but all models rely on predicting different states. In this case, we are using an SEIR model. That means we have a susceptible state for those people not infected, an exposed state for people who are asymptomatic, an infected state where people are showing symptoms, and finally, a recovered state. We can use this model to predict the future for each of those states. However, our model relies on estimating certain variables. To do that, we need to measure certain states. In this case, we have a measurement for the infected state, but we also have a mortality measurement. So how do we incorporate that information into our model? We can do that by adding a mortality coefficient, which we call f. This way, we can incorporate two measured states into our model. That means we can have higher confidence in our prediction because the infected measurement may not be accurate due to the availability of testing. However, we still have multiple variables we need to solve for. To do that, we'll use maximum likelihood estimation. This way we can estimate when Bob will go from susceptible state to the exposed state, then to the infected state, and finally, to recovered state. A model like this can help hospitals better estimate what kind of equipment, staff, and supplies they will need for the weeks ahead. Now that we've covered our dynamics and estimated the variables, we can model the outbreak and compare our prediction to the measured data. For example, using the infected state, we can estimate the death rate. The measured data here is shown in purple and the estimated state is shown in blue. But this is just the first step to validating our model. We still have other predictions that we need to check. So let's look at another way we can make a prediction to compare with our measured state. We can use our estimated recovery state, which we'll plot in blue, and our estimated exposed state, which we will plot in orange, to predict our measured infected population, shown here in purple. As you can see, the model trend follows closely to the measured values. But we can also look at the cumulative population in an infected state, which we will plot in purple using the estimated recovered state, plotted here in blue, and the estimated exposed state, shown here in orange. This is all based on given data, so our model isn't doing any long-term predicting. Now, let's predict one week ahead without giving any of that information to the model. Here we can see our infected prediction in blue, and like before, our measured infected state in purple. But this is five days of additional data the model has not seen, here plotted in orange. This is how we further validate our model, and as you can see, the predicted trend matches closely to the measured trend. However, this is one of two states that we have measurements for. So let's look at the death prediction using our infected prediction. Again, the model prediction is in blue, and our model hasn't seen the new data for the infected state or the new data for the death state. The data in the model hasn't seen is once again plotted here in orange. While this is a limited validation of our model, the results look promising. Of course, none of this work would be possible if it weren't for the people who came before me to lay the groundwork for this project. This is just a few of the references that were used to create this model. Lastly. I just want to say thank you all for watching. Thank you.